Hey guys and welcome back to the shop. So this video is number three in a series that I've been making about how I built my five axis CNC machine. Today I'm going to be discussing the metal parts of the construction piece. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. The construction of the frame is actually relatively straightforward. I just used 2x2 two two steel, capped off by a 2x4 steel. The 2x2 two two is spaced every 20 inches with an overall length of 10 feet and overall height of 8 feet. Those dimensions were actually chosen just for my comfort. Um, there's really no mathematical or scientific reason for it. I just didn't want to have to actually walk or crawl under any kind of uh, obstructions when I'm actually getting in and out of the machine and carrying parts in and out of the machine. So you certainly can make adjustments to those uh, items if you wanted to. So this is the work hold down table I came up with. I'm pretty happy with this design. It's actually really worked out pretty well for me. Uh, so basically all it is is a table that's been covered with MFD. The MFD is simply there to make sure that foam uh, doesn't get up underneath the, the table when it's actually cutting. That foam device or the foam dust gets everywhere. Then the table was covered with a sheet of MFD and I used the device itself to make sure that it was completely routed flat. So the uh, floor is obviously not 100% flat, but considering we've gone through the measuring, this is completely parallel to the ground. So taking this device here and running it completely on the MFD, made sure that the surface was completely level. Then I put this extruded aluminum down. I get my extruded aluminum from 8020, and if you've never seen their site, I'll actually leave a link in the description below. From that site, they also have these linear rail type systems um, that's actually designed to work on the extruded aluminum. They also come with, uh, they have this clamp that you order with them as well. So what I've done is pretty straightforward. I basically take and get a piece of wood that's a quarter inch thick. Then I place my work material on top of that wood, just glue it down, secure it somehow. And this is basically then my base. Now I can actually lock this down. And if I need to, if I didn't make this quite right, I've actually been using some just regular old carpenter shims and coming in here and just kind of snugging it up. And now this is not going anywhere at all. So it, can, it stays completely rock solid during the cut. Uh, I like this system. The advantage, I believe, is uh, what I've done is basically I can just free up the part by going like this, like this, and now the part is able to move. If I get everything out of the way, and I can take it and go to a work area, sand it, do whatever I need to do, then I can come back, reposition it. As long as I don't move those sides of the table, I'm able to get it right back to where it was within at least a degree that I'm comfortable with and do the final operation. So what I'm doing when I'm doing these cuts, basically the foam is cut first and that's then cut under mill, about two to three millimeters. And then we're sealing the foam and putting a hardener on it and then coming back over and doing a finish pass. That should alleviate a need for doing a lot of hand sanding. We're still doing some testing with that and uh, matter of fact some of the videos coming up I'll, I'll kind of go through the whole workflow. We're going to scan a car, cut the parts and see what we get. So. All right, so now we're looking at the x-axis. This is probably the axis I'm least happy with. I'm using V-connector here. The real reason why I'm using V-connector instead of a linear rail is I would have to order a custom length. And at the time, I just wasn't sure that was a good idea. I was still dealing with a number of variables with this machine, and I was afraid that I would order that, and it's very expensive, and it wouldn't work. So this is a part that I am going to be upgrading in the future, but I do have to redesign these ends as well as the engagement motor. Uh, so there'll be a little bit of work here, but uh, it does work. I'm just not happy with the overall tolerance I get with this. So now we're looking at the gantry as well as the trolley. So the gantry is comprised of these two pieces of, of extruded aluminum. Uh, again, I got them from 8020. And these five plates, actually there's 10 plates, five in the front and five in the back. Um, uh, the trolley itself rides on top of the linear rail, and this is 20 millimeter linear rail, which is then bolted to this quarter inch steel plate. So these, there's two plates, one in the front and one in the back, and they're actually perfectly identical to each other. The Z-axis is a custom piece of extruded aluminum that I was able to source from uh, router parts. They were kind enough to actually make me a custom length. That's actually bolted again with linear rail, so I got four pieces, one, two, three, four. Uh, they're again 20 millimeter and they ride inside of this uh, quarter inch uh, system here I made. 
Uh, you'll notice that I do have a positioning system. However, this positioning system is no longer needed. Um, those were used when I was using the NEMA 34s. The clear pass, which you can kind of see at the very top, the one clear pass motor there, they actually have an auto home as well as an auto stop feature, so the sensors are no longer needed, which is actually really nice because it goes home and there's really no question if it's actually home. It goes home every single time. Um, so I think that pretty much covers the, uh, the gantry as well as the trolley. All right, so the BC head unit. I'd love to say I came up with this design. It's a fantastic piece of kit. However, I didn't. Uh, uh, it's from Doju Drives. I'm sure I'm not saying that correct, correctly, but I will put a link in the description. But what I did have to do is actually come up with a way to mount it to my piece of extruded aluminum. So you'll see there's two plates here. One actually connects the drive, the other one connects to the extruded aluminum, and then they're actually bolted together. The thing you want to remember when you're doing your design, if you do decide to do this design, is you need to keep everything lined up perfectly. So this point right here is the center point on the ball screw, as well as it right there. That way, the only articulation point is from the tip of the bit to the actual center of this uh, spindle. Um, that's important because otherwise you're going to have calculations that are all off the map. If, uh, so you need to make sure that everything kind of centers right to your articulation point. Hopefully that was helpful. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for these videos I've been making on this 5-axis CNC build. I do realize they actually were pretty high level. I didn't make any videos when I was actually constructing the machine. Um, and that probably would have been helpful for others. I did try to cover some of the points where I actually got stuck or I had some challenges. Hopefully you found them somewhat helpful if you're, if you're trying to make a machine like this. But if you do run into a problem, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If I get enough comments about a specific matter, I'll actually go ahead and create another follow-up video to kind of do a better job explaining a certain part. But remember, I made this for one reason. I made it to make car body parts. So the videos coming up will actually be dedicated to that. We'll be doing some scanning, some computer work to uh, basically make them fit the car, as well as cutting it out and making molds and hopefully making a finished product at some point. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, uh, please feel free to subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.